The Bible recounts a war between the Gileadites and the Ephraimites. The warring parties didn't wear distinguishing uniforms like armies do now, and they weren't ethnically different, so it was kind of hard to tell them apart. However, the Ephraimites' language didn't have a sh sound, while the Gileadites did, and the Gileadites used this to their advantage. When they suspected a man of being an Ephraimite, the Gileadites would ask the person in question to say, Shibboleth, which a Gileadite could do with ease. However, if the suspect said Sibboleth rather than Shibboleth, they became proverbial toast. As a result of this, the term Shibboleth has come to mean the use of a word or pronunciation that pegs one from being from a particular place. Are there Utah Shibboleths? Let's take a look at one pronunciation that is purported to be a surefire way to tell if someone hails from the Beehive State. I grew up in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and I remember hearing church leaders, most of whom were in their 70s and 80s, talk about the measure of a man, or putting one's treasures in heaven, and earthly pleasures. That Asia pronunciation always struck me as odd, and I just chalked it up to being an old man kind of thing. The real question is whether it's a Utah thing. In my 2020 survey, only 11% of the Utahns chose the measure, pleasure, and treasure pronunciations. The rest preferred measure, pleasure, and treasure. The Asia pronunciations were a bit more common in the rural areas of the state, and as I had suspected, it was related to more older speakers. Is it a Utah shibboleth? Well, sadly for those who are sure it is, no, it's not. Many people actually point to the Asia pronunciations as being common in the Midwest. Mm-hmm.